Hi, here's a quick video to help you understand equilibrium a little better. So we've been talking a lot about one dimensional state equations which have the general form of x prime is equal to f of x. Notice here that the rate of change in the state x is dependent on the current state itself. It does not depend on what time it is. These are known as autonomous equations. What autonomous means is self-governing. And so that means that x is going to figure out how it's supposed to change just by looking at itself, not by looking at its watch and saying, okay, what time is it to? Okay, so there's no t dependence in f of x, and that's very important for our theory of equilibrium points. So what we know about equilibrium points is that we take the right-hand side of the differential equation, the function f of x, and we set it equal to zero. So when we solve for the roots of f of x, this gives us special points, I'm going to denote them as x star, that are called equilibrium points. Even though they're called equilibrium points, you want to think about them as equilibrium solutions because they are solutions to the differential equation. Okay? But because these are special values of x, such that the x prime is always going to be equal to zero, remember we set it equal to zero to get those points, that means that if the derivative is always equal to zero, then the special equilibrium solution is a constant. Because remember that if the derivative of a function is always zero, that function must be a constant function. So that tells us that these equilibrium solutions are constant values. They hold the value of x star for all time. That's a really important point. So I'm going to draw a picture here of the time series, and I'm going to draw several different solutions. In this example, I'm not going to write down any equations. Um, because the equations that would result in these solutions are a little bit complicated, but I'm just trying to make the point about the equilibrium solutions being constant for all time, okay? So let's say that I had some state equation, some f of x that I solved, and I found an x star, and my x star, my special equilibrium solution, was located at a value of x right there. Then what does this solution look like for all time? If I was going to draw it, for the rest of time forever? It's got to be a constant, right? And so it's going to be a horizontal line for all time. That's known as an equilibrium point or an equilibrium solution. You see, it's unchanging. That's why we call it being in equilibrium. Okay? Now, let's say in this equation that if we start here at some other initial condition that's not equal to the equilibrium point, just for fun, let's consider that maybe starting with this initial condition, it goes like this. Maybe it has a solution that looks like this. Okay, you see how I drew this solution, kind of funny, kind of wiggly looking? It's tending toward the equilibrium point. And because it's tending toward the equilibrium point, we know that this equilibrium point is at least semi-stable. It's stable for some fixed points that are below it right, because it has other initial conditions tending toward it. But the point I'm trying to make here is one about equilibrium points being constant for all time. Because you may look at a solution like this, and you may say to yourself, well, look, there's a lot of ups and downs in this solution. Look right here. There's a horizontal tangent here. There's another horizontal tangent here, and one here, and one here, and one here. So this solution has a lot of horizontal tangents. For some values of time, the x prime for this solution, dx dt, is equal to zero. At this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point, these are time points, times when this other solution has the property that x prime is equal to zero. Okay? But it's not having the property that x prime is equal to zero for all time. It's just having a little bit of ups and downs, has a couple horizontal tangents, but this solution here is not an equilibrium solution. What an equilibrium solution always looks like in a time series is it always just looks like a horizontal line. Okay? Um, I think that I saw some confusion about this, and I think that the confusion was coming from our classical example of describing stability and instability in terms of the tops and bottoms of a hill, or the bottoms and tops of a hill, right? So this is a classic, classical illustration 
of stability. And this is something that we see in the, in the book too, is that when they start to talk about stable and unstable, they might draw a hump here, and they might draw a trough there. And then they're saying that if you started a ball at the top of this hill, it would be at an unstable equilibrium, right? And likewise, if you started a ball at the bottom of this hill here, this would be something that we're calling a stable equilibrium. A stable equilibrium. I'll just abbreviate that with EQ. Okay? And so this kind of gives us a good understanding of what it means to be unstable or stable um, from the concepts of disruption or perturbation. Because if we take this stable, this unstable solution that's just sitting at the top of a hill and we shake it around to perturb it a little bit, it's going to fall out of its equilibrium. It's like a pencil that's just bouncing precariously on its tip. Okay? Contrast that with a stable equilibrium where if you imagine shaking this around a little bit, the ball is going to fall right back down to zero. Okay? Now that's just so that we can illustrate what it means to be stable or unstable in the context of equilibrium, but it does not mean that these points, these peaks and troughs, are unstable and stable equilibrium of an equilibrium solution. Okay, so that's what I really want to clear up is that this solution here is not an equilibrium solution. Equilibrium solutions on a time series graph will always look like a horizontal line for all time, and that's because x prime is equal to zero for all time. Okay? So what is the corresponding like mm, situation of differential equations here if we're drawing these humps and, and troughs here and saying that they correspond to unstable and stable equilibrium? We didn't actually define the state equations um, that are underlying this. This is just an illustration of the concept of stability. But let me draw you some corresponding time graphs to this so that you can really see what I mean there. Okay. So let's say that we did have the state equations that were governing, uh, let's say, the height. If we want to talk about one dimension, we would just have to simplify it to one dimension. So let's say that I want to describe the height of the ball, right? That's my one dimension. So let's say that x is equal to the height of the ball, right? And I'll show you what I mean by stable and unstable equilibrium in terms of this. Is let's say that we had some kind of meter stick here, right? And maybe this is um, this is one meter, and the top of the hill here is at three meters, and so you see. Three meters high, that's an unstable equilibrium point. One meter high, that's a stable equilibrium. And then I would have some x prime equals to f of x. That would be the governing equations that describe how the ball's height is going to change in time. I'm not going to write those down. I'm just focusing on trying to describe the time dynamics in the time series right now. Okay, so if we had these time dynamics, we would have two equilibrium points. One would be at a stable height of one meter, and another would be a stable height at three meters. That's supposed to be a perfectly straight line, okay? So these are two different equilibrium solutions. This is an unstable equilibrium point. Maybe I'll use that EQ again, EQ, right? And this is a stable equilibrium point right here, okay? But you see, there's no actual peaks and troughs in the graphs of equilibrium points. Equilibrium points, or equilibrium solutions, are always completely flat lines because their derivatives are zero for all time. Okay? But what we were trying to say with this example is that if we just flicked this ball a little bit, right? We just perturbed it, a little bit of noise got in there. Or another thing would be if we started with an initial condition that was close to this unstable point, but not, direct, not exactly equal to it, then that initial condition or perturbed state would not roll up the hill and then sit pretty at the top. It would fall down the hill. And that means that in a time series, if we started with a ball whose height was a little bit less than three, it would not approach three. It would go down, probably looking something like that, some kind of exponential decay. It would go down 
towards the zero point, okay? So that's how those two examples are related. 